morning, gladiators. Welcome to another meaningful episode of the Colorful Voices podcast. Today's episode is incredibly special to me as we delve into the not only stories of resilience and hope, but also loss, recovery, and the ongoing fight against breast cancer. October marks Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I can think of no other person, better person to have this conversation with to start off Breast Cancer Awareness Month than my queen, who is very special to my heart, Miss Lindsay Hawkinson. Queen, thank you for being a special guest on, our, on the Colorful Voices podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Timothy. I'm so excited to be here and, and to see you here um, and excited for our conversation this morning. Same here. You know, for, for our gladiators who are just tuning in, they may not know just how special you are to me. Uh, so for our gladiators here, uh, why don't we share a little bit of how we met? So just doing some quick math, I think that we've known each other for what almost 10 years now, um, probably pretty close to it. Um, I used to work for a program at Syracuse University, the Daniello Institute for Veterans and Military Families, the IVMF, um, where we helped uh, communities um, and organizations help veterans and transition service members kind of navigate to resources that they need in their community. And I was working on a, um, like our annual impact report, and we wanted to be able to tell the story of how um, a veteran in, in one state can be connected to services in another state, because often you don't, um, a lot of veterans won't transition from active duty to the place that they're at, and they usually go back home or another location. Um, so working with the community, uh, the community in Pittsburgh, actually, um, they shared your story um, and how you came from Florida to to Pittsburgh. And that kind of kickstarted um, this relationship that's been almost 10 years strong and watching you grow um, and watching you really um, heal and um be this incredible, amazing person that you have always been, but just needed um, a little bit of time to, to grow and blossom and heal. Um, so, I mean, from watching you and knowing your story as a client to working in the network um, and helping support so many other veterans um, in similar circumstances and getting the services and benefits that they needed, uh, to then um, coming through our entrepreneurship program a couple of years ago, um, the Entrepreneurship Bootcamp for Veterans, and uh, watching you through that entire week and beyond and growing colorful voices and the incredible advocacy work that you've been doing here. It's been my privilege completely to have seen you grow and evolve um, wow. through all of that time. And I'm thankful to be uh, a tiny little part of that journey with you. <laughs> Queen, I... I was not expecting that at all, and I want to I want to return that that kindness because it, it's not it is truly our community. It's it's our story. It is it is a collective story, and I love our community here in Pittsburgh. It's amazing to have seen the supports that showed up when I knew I needed a transfer transition from Florida to here. And it was, though, the impact of the America Service Network that allowed that transition to be so smooth, whereas uh, it would have been extremely difficult had we not had that program and service. And so I, I applaud you and I thank you for all that you do in our community. And before we dive deeper into the topics of today, I want to start by sharing with our, with our listeners how... Uh, oh, oh, we kind of did start that, but uh, I want to share this beautiful story when we got to Syracuse and EBB. Because, <laughs> you know, you're a little competitive. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, if we can make a competition about it and I can win, yes, that sounds like the best time ever. <laughs> so, what, what are we going to talk about when you had to be my uh, cornhole partner and uh, we still won? <laughs> yes, that is exactly what we're, that's one of the stories we're going to get into before we wrap today. So I, I, I love that. <laughs> and 
So I wanted to, uh, as we go into a, a, a difficult topic and transition, and, and we begin talking about the impact of suicide and how it leaves families searching for answers. Uh, it's something that doesn't just affect the person who's gone. We know that the entire family and the community that's left behind suffers. And the recovery process is ongoing every day and often feels like it's an uphill battle. How have you seen similar experiences within your own circle uh, tackle this very difficult topic? Um, so before I came to Syracuse University, I worked for the Department of the Army um, for a little over six years. And part of my responsibility there was actually advising the command teams on the impact of the deployment cycle to families, as well as uh, high risk soldier and family behavior. Um, and part of that was reviewing um, suicide <clears throat> ideations, attempts and completions. Um, I, there are still several cases where I never knew the soldier when they were alive, um, but their death and their choice to take their own life um, stays with me. Um, and, you know, I, I've seen it firsthand. I've been there with the soldiers with during the memorial services um, with their families coming in with others not part of the unit and not connected um, and how it impacts and stays with you forever. It's devastating and incredibly hard um, on everybody, on the entire community and carried a lot of that work and the importance and, and why I was so excited to come to the IVMF um, and do that work because, you know, working for the Army, you were just a tiny piece of a huge system. Um, and it felt like there was little that we could do, even with all of the suicide prevention activities and trainings and everything, um, that it was really, really hard to move the needle. And I felt, you know, coming to the IBMF that there was such a huge opportunity to save lives that we weren't able to save on the active duty side. Um, and I saw that happen firsthand, um, which was amazing to be part of, of the, the Staff Sergeant Fox Suicide Prevention Program and helping communities build suicide prevention programs um, was so, so rewarding. And actually, you were here last year, um, yeah. one of my most favorite events that I was so honored to be able to do this Fed talk we did in collaboration with the, the local VA here in Syracuse, a suicide prevention education, where we did, um, you know, a few conversations with folks that are with somebody like Alejandro Villanueva um, was there last year and um, an army veteran played professional football. Um, and uh, now just kind of does, he's a farmer. He's hilarious. Yeah. Um, he's a farmer <laughs> in Miami, um, but had an incredible story of his own transition and his own challenges and seeking help. And then did what I thought was um, one of the most impactful panels that I've um, listened to was, you know, looking at all of the different perspectives of somebody impacted by a um, service member or veteran suicide of, you know, that unit commander that is yeah. in that leadership position, um, you as a survivor, a family member, and then that mental health professional that carries a lot of that weight with them um, as well. So kind of hearing all of those different perspectives and bringing it full, um, full circle was so incredibly important. I was very fortunate to be part of that. And, you know, hearing some of the stories afterwards of, I'm so glad I came today. I really needed that. And like, thank you for this message. Um, I'm going to go get help tomorrow. So just some of those pieces, it's just, it's amazing, but I feel like it's still something we don't talk about. Um, Absolutely. When we do suicide, when we do mental health first aid training and we do suicide prevention training, um, one of the exercises is turning to the person next to you and says, have you thought about killing yourself? And yeah. just the act of that um, is so hard for people to even consider asking that question. So even practicing it 
have you thought about killing yourself? Yes, no. Okay, do you have a plan? Um, do you have a backup plan? All of those kind of things are so incredibly important and getting comfortable and asking those so important questions. It's so it's important because it destigmatizes. It takes mm -hmm. away the weight and it allows others to know that, listen, we have these thoughts and it's okay to have the thoughts. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's human. Mm -hmm. It's not okay to move forward. That's all, that's a different situation. And, and, but getting the help is so important. Yes. And I loved the spit talk and to see the different and be part of the different perspectives. It was wonderful. And you're right, just to see how um, the audience was receptive because of mm -hmm. the, the degree uh, that was put together. It was great to, to see and be a part of. Lindsay, you are an amazing array of light. And I wanted to actually take a little sidestep here. You didn't know I was going to do this, but you <laughs> and, and I want to give you your flowers because uh, September is also recovery, uh, National Recovery Month. And early into my recovery of, of alcohol, especially when I went to EBB, uh, you took it upon yourself to be so supportive of me and allowed me to go to one of my, uh, go to an AA meeting. And I, the, the way that you just so in your heart offered and just could see that that was something that I needed. You will never know. Well, now you do, because I'm telling you <laughs> how much that meant to me in the moment and has continued to stuck with me and sticks with me into the success of what we do. Uh, it's those little, little small things that are so incredibly big. And I never really got a chance to say thank you and to actually tell you or to articulate how important that was for me because that was one of those moments where I was like, I could see myself drinking. And in that moment, I did not. And so uh, thank you for that. And I, because it's, we're wrapping up Recovery Month. And, and it also goes into the sense of community. And the sense of community is something that does give me hope. It gives me an overwhelming sense of hope. It's so important that we create those spaces for people to share their stories, uh, to recover together, and to honor those that we've lost. And speaking of honoring those that we've lost, I want to take a moment to, to recognize those who are eligible, who are fighting the battle against breast cancer right now and to remember the lives lost in that fight. Is there someone that you'd like to honor today? Um, <clears throat> I think just those that are struggling um, or those that are going through it or those that are newly diagnosed or um, nearing the end of their battle, um, not breast cancer, but have a very close family friend of mine that is nearing the end of their battle. Um, and thinking about their family and close friends and uh, the impact of the lives that they've lived um, are so incredibly important. Um, but I think going back to the idea of community and similarly with suicide, that there's there are prevention measures. Um, get your regular checkups. Um, I think that can be said about everything. Um, go to the doctor. Do the recommended um, checkups. Go get your mammograms. Um, check in on a friend. Um, if you if you haven't had your if 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 you have a friend that hasn't or ask a friend, have you had yeah. your mammogram? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and that goes for both men and women too. Um, if you have a history of it, you know, a good friend of mine is a male that has breast had breast cancer. Yeah. And I think that is so under discussed that it can happen to anybody, regardless of your gender. So go get checked, feel something funky, go get it checked. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, that is, that brings up the, the, the awareness aspect. Men can get breast cancer. It's, um, uh, it is something that happens to all of us, not just one subsect of us. Mm -hmm. Now, as we take this moment, we want to take a time for a moment of silence for those that we've lost and, and honor your space in this time. Thank you. Now, moments of reflection are so important especially when we take the time to remember those who've touched our lives and left an indelible, indelible mark. So before we wrap up, I do have just a few couple of other questions, a lot of questions, and then definitely I want to get into a, a few softball questions. <laughs> uh, so my, I, I love asking this question for an amazing reason. What's your favorite color? And why? Um, so I have a couple of favorite colors. Um, of course, obviously, orange is number one favorite color because you can't have Syracuse without orange. No. Um, you really can't. <laughs> <laughs> but also um, purple um, is probably oh. like my secondary favorite color. I'm not a pink girl. I'm a purple girl. Okay. What about purple? I don't know. I think purple was my grandmother's favorite color. And she okay. had this really amazing, I never saw her wear it, but it was always in the back of her closet where it was this like cocktail dress and it was covered in sequins Ooh. and it was purple and it was the most beautiful, pretty thing I think I've ever seen. Oh. Um, and I just remember admiring that sparkly purple dress in her closet. So <laughs> it probably comes from my grandmother. See, I, I love this amazing time we're in with this this amazing splash of colors and 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 hair and just creativity that mm -hmm. we're we're seeing and and that's so beautiful. Uh and it resonates, by the way, with much of the tone of today's conversation. Purple, uh, I don't know if you know, rep does represent uh, healing. Um and on the LGBTQ pride, pride flag, it also orange represents healing on the LGBTQ pride flag. So it, it definitely resonates with the tone of our conversations, uh, conversation today. And one of the last questions that I have, which is a little futuristic. <laughs> Everyone's like, when I ask it, but it, I love it to prepare a community for it. And that is, uh, what are your thoughts on quantum computing and how do you think or feel it could impact entrepreneurship in the future? So full disclosure, I have no idea what quantum computing is. Um, <laughs> yeah. I really don't. I'm assuming it probably has something to do around AI. Yeah. All those kind of things. Yeah. Which is so far outside of my scope of knowledge that it is embarrassing. Um, but what I can tell you yeah. is that Chat GPT has been incredibly helpful in creating really creative titles yes. <laughs> for different event sessions or email titles and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so if it's along those lines, I think it'll be incredibly helpful in being creative. And um, but I think, you know, like all new technologies and things, um, a little bit scary at first until we figure out uh, how it can be used in different um, different areas. But I know at least here at Syracuse University, there's a ton of work happening around it, um, yeah. which means almost touching every facet of all of our schools and colleges um, here on campus and incredible to see what they're able to do and think about and um, use in climate to education in the classroom to media and journalism to democracy that it's it's exciting to see for sure absolutely and i can i just say beautiful answer because until i heard dr kaku uh mikio kaku mention quantum computing i had no idea about it until glcc and i uh, I, I i i'm spiritual and very abstract so i um I like the, the quantum leaps internally, um, and I'm really fascinated with its effects on those who are neurodivergent, those who are um, 
may have had difficulty communicating. Um, and it's actually one of our student veterans of the year. I'm going to give her an amazing shout out because uh, she wrote this and I had no idea uh, of some of her, her barriers, but how she utilized uh, technology and it just affirmed me. And um, I know what affirm other veterans who are saying, okay, this, the adaptive technologies that allow us to find ourselves and our footing, I'm looking so forward to that uh, because it's that confidence level. And you're right. I can't wait to, to be back in Syracuse because it's forever blue. And uh, I, you know, I've told you this. I'm going to be Dr. Jones because not only do, because I want to, I love Indiana Jones. <laughs> uh, but I, you can't, um, you can't inspire folks and tell them that they can be anything and everything and not go and achieve it. And yeah, you can do it. You can do it. And for our community, as we're wrapping up here, um, we, I did, we did, I did, I mentioned in the beginning that you're a competitive person. <laughs> so, uh, for a quick story, how, please tell our list, our gladiators about when I first came to EBB and the competition. <laughs> yeah. So, um, if, if for anybody that has not seen the National Veteran Resource Center at Syracuse University, I encourage you to to check it out online on the Syracuse University website and look at the incredible pictures of this magnificent building that's really a resource and hub for veterans on campus and really across the country. Um, but on our third floor of the building, there is a parade field, um, this relatively um, kind of a uh, decent size uh, grass field that is fantastic for, for entertaining and just beautiful and being out there and stuff. And um, the first night of EBV to bring all of the participants and stuff together, which is class of what, like 27 or 28 in your guys' yeah. class um, together for a little bit of networking and socializing, just to get to know each other before you, you spend the next literally what 16, 17 hour days together. Yes. Um, <laughs> Very intense. It's like the calm before the storm. It's like, hey, here's some really great food and some beer and some drinks and or and some games. And uh, by the way, we'll see you at 6 a.m. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, to kind of lighten the atmosphere and stuff, we brought out the cornhole boards and love a game. And there were a couple of other uh, uh, classmates and stuff that were there and challenged them to a game. And Poor Timothy got roped into the game, and but it's okay because I carried our team, um, and I think we won rather quickly um, yeah. and put them to shame, um, yeah. which was a great way to start the week. And I'm going to tell you, uh, now, Lindsay, Lindsay won. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got a point or two on the board. I, I got a point, uh, you know. I got, you know, I got one point. I, you know, I, I got, a, I got on the board. I got, a, I got yeah. a. You know, I kept us entertained. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was good. It was good. Definitely an experience. Gladiators, this is only the beginning of our conversation. I could not thank you, Lindsay, for being here. You and your, you have flowers coming to you. Oh. Uh, the growth of Colorful Voices and the impact that we're going to have, it, it starts with where we've been and it continues with where we are. And gladiators, this isn't just a conversation. I'm sorry, this isn't just us talking to you. This is a conversation. So in the comments below, please drop your favorite Syracuse University memory and moment. Uh, if there's someone that you would like to honor their life, yeah, let us know. We wanna, we wanna know what uh, what life we can honor with you. And most importantly, you're not alone. You are an unrepeatable miracle. And we need you here. You have a purpose and you are going to do amazing things. Lindsay, I want to thank you for taking your time this morning. I'm not going to take much more of your time, but I'd love for you to take these last two minutes to wrap up with our gladiators and say goodbye. 
Yes, I just want to say thank you, Timothy, for having me. I, again, just incredibly excited to see you on this journey. Um, and do you want to add to if there is anybody out there struggling, anyone that is in a crisis or considering suicide, um, to call or text 988 if you are a veteran, press 1. Um, and that will get you connected 24-7 to um, somebody that's able to help you. Um, and then Timothy, just to say, I can't wait to continue to watch you and, um, I want to be in the room for your dissertation. So I will see you then for sure. I'm sure I'll see you beforehand, but definitely 100% yeah. will see you, um, in your dissertation. Yes. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Gladiators. Thank you so much. And until our next episode, have an amazing day. Thank you.